Mike Custer. You've, tweaked, you've rewritten those, haven't you? <laughs> Not my call. These. We'll give you. And most important, you'll make this guy, my dad, the happiest guy in the world. Although we have spent the last two hours or so trying to do justice to the life and career of Tim Russert, my fear is that we have only scratched the surface. It's impossible, I think, for you people at home to know how big a hole we all have in our hearts this morning and how much we'll miss our friend and our colleague or how we will forever be trying to fill his formidable shoes. You know, Tim would be the first person to say at one point it is necessary to move on. The news cycle, he would say, demands it. There's an election and so much more to cover. But moving on is much easier said than done when it comes to Tim Russer, because in many ways he defined us here, and I know he elevated us all. But just think of the feast that awaits him. Right now he's probably making a list of all the powerful people, the former presidents, the senators, the members of Congress, sitting up there in heaven's green room, lining up for the chance to go toe-to-toe -to -toe just one more time with Tim. He's probably already made the booking calls. He's lined up one heck of a panel for tomorrow morning. And as always is the case, he is doing his homework. He's getting prepared. When that red light goes on, he'll be at the top of his game. He'll shoot from the hip. He will take no prisoners. God, what a show he will have. So, Tim, I leave you this morning with the words you've said to me on so many occasions before big interviews and before big moments in my life. Pal, go get him. <laughs>